Okay, before we begin, I just want to remind us of our norms. Um, as we come together as a staff, we want to make sure that we're engaged and participating, um, that there's an opportunity to speak, that you speak your truth, um, be open to possibilities and learning, and stay focused on students. So, I know Ms. <laughs> Lindsay asked about your staff. As you can see, we have a whole lot of them, and some of them are here with us today. And normally we'd love for them to stand up and say a little bit about yourself, but if we did that, we'd probably be here an extra hour. So I think what we're going to do is I'm just going to announce their name. If they're here, they're going to stand up and wave so you can at least see who they are, um, and then hope that you get an opportunity to connect with them at a later time. Um, and I do want to also let you know we are videotaping this. We do have some staff members who are not able to join us today, and so we wanted to make sure that they um, heard all of this information. So um, Mr. Jeff is taking this for us. So thank you, Mr. Jeff. Um, so first up, we have Catherine Hines, our new high five teacher. Thank you. 
team than maybe what it was to theater. So we're open to that. Um, so we're still working on that and a uh, social work position, you know, as we can retreat also the 77 early on um, design. And so we are in the works of filling her position. So um, I do want to acknowledge that that's a huge loss. She's our HHF coordinator. She did a lot with that. So our social workers are going to have to kind of take that on in her absence. And so please just be patient as you're waiting for some of that information. It just may be taking a little bit longer to get to everyone. Um, we also have our wonderful Ms. Malkowski, who is here with us today, but will be taking a little bit of a leave to enjoy um, some more additional time with her new son, Jude, so we are working to find a long haul for that. Um, and we are also looking for some additional um, AP positions, by the goal, and such in the middle school, and some of the So we're still in the midst of interviewing and hiring, so if you know of anybody who you think would be great in any of those positions, please let us know, because um, we'd love to get these Um, and this is where that graphic that I showed you of things you can't control and things that you can't is going to become very important because there is so much that we are not going to be able to control. We will do the best that we can. Um, I cannot tell you how amazing you all did last spring when we came back in person. There were so many schools who were quarantining, like nine, ten classrooms. We quarantined one classroom and I think two buses. That was it. So you guys did great, really keeping our kids safe. Our families did amazing. And Sheila and Bethany and Gina were outstanding in the office. So I I know that we, we did a lot of really creative things last spring that we're not going to be able to do this year. We are coming back fully in person for those families that are choosing to come. So there's not going to be that cap that we were sort of working with last year. So a lot of those things are going to make kind of creating your space a little bit more difficult and tricky. Um, but we'll work through it. So um, as we say before, you guys are going to get this slideshow. So we have LinkedIn documents, so you guys will have access to them. So we linked in the district COVID guidelines, so you guys can see that. I believe the district already sent it out to everybody anyways, but it's just another spot for you to have that information. Um, if you are anything like me, I thought there's really not a lot in here. I kind of was hoping for a more robust document. Um, so I think a lot of it we're going to have to do on our own, which is probably better for us to do. Um, we are going to ask that you continue to sign in and out every day, so you should see um, the sheet on the door. Just take that picture, same as you did last spring. For those of you who were um, home, if you're not sure how to do that, please see for contact tracing purposes, want to make sure that we know who is in the building um, during the day. So please remember to check in and check out. We're going to be completely transparent. I'm horrible at remembering to do that. Um, so it's something I definitely need to get better at, but we need to make that part of our morning routine where we come in and just take a picture so we can then take it when you leave. So hopefully we'll get better about that, but um, we'll, we'll help any um, masks are required in all buildings, so that came out, that was pretty clear. It doesn't you know, need to talk about that a lot. Um, social distancing is recommended whenever possible. And this is where those classroom spaces are going to be tricky. Um, we're going to ask that you set up your classroom in a way that you think is going to be safe and comfortable for everybody, knowing that your students will all need to be wearing masks, but we're not going to be able to spread out the way we did last spring. We're not going to be able to take down the walls like we did. So um, you're going to have to be creative on what that looks like. You're going to have to think of your systems when you're pulling your small groups. Um, because as we'll see when Sheila comes up, the one really, really murky, difficult thing with all of this is when a COVID case happens in your classroom, you guys are quarantined. Because it's not everybody. So it becomes really tricky. Whereas before it was 
pretty cut and dry. Okay, you gotta go there, okay, your whole class is gonna go home. That's not how it's gonna go. So, um, we'll wait for Sheila to come and talk about that a little bit. Um, I'm sure we're gonna have lots of questions about that, but that's something to think about, is what systems are you putting in place to make sure that you don't have tons of movement and cross moving and all of that. Um, like last year, engineers can still continue on their pretty strict cleaning um, regimen. If you're seeing something or a room you don't think is being cleaned, please let us know immediately so we can follow up. We've got some amazing engineers that joined us over the summer. They've been working their rear ends off getting the building ready. They're, they're truly amazing. Samira, Larry, Odell, like they've been great. So hopefully we've, we've got a nice group here that are ready to go. But if there is an issue, please let us know. Um, each classroom will continue to be supplied with wipes, hand sanitizer, disposable masks, water bottles. Um, Jamie and I haven't really solidified a water bottle cleaning schedule yet like we had last year. We'll continue, we bought a washer and dryer last year, so we will continue washing masks if we have to. Um, and each teacher will get BioS. The one thing that they did say is that we probably don't need to use the BioS in the same way we did last year. Last year, I think it was used it all the time everywhere. And they say you really aren't transmitting it through surfaces, only through surfaces. And so maybe just a couple of cleanings throughout the day, maybe you don't need to spray it out on your stuff the way that maybe you did last year. So that's something to think about. And that's hopefully over a little bit without the stress. Um, and then I just want to know too, because uh, I put in the e-learning plan here. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit more, but I wanted you guys to have access to that. Um, they are going to get everybody um, a Chromebook or an iPad. And so there is an expectation that if we did all have to, let's say, go home, that we're continuing to teach, we have access to our classrooms, our CSOs, and all of that. So there is an e-learning plan that we shall make sure that we look at um, before we start. As of right now, yes, recess masks. Yeah. I think so. We'll clarify that because they're, we've been saying in the buildings, in the buildings, there hasn't been anything that says outside the building. So we'll, we'll, we'll check on that. Any other questions about this before we go over here? Uh, rugs, pillows, Yeah, like classroom manipulatives, <laughs> like in yeah. kindergarten and high five, the house area, like they so yeah, all of your rugs can be back down on the floor. Um, all of that. You might want to think about pillows. You know, you might want to see how it goes. There might be things that you maybe want to introduce. It's like, okay, we're doing all right. You know, I'll bring the pillows up. Some of it too is what you're comfortable with, right? So if, if the pillow thing makes you nervous, don't come out. You know, it's not something that they absolutely need to have. But yes, all your manipulatives, everything. We will definitely have that. Do you want to think about maybe having some organizational system so that I know that if this is my bag and I'm giving it to Jamie, Jamie's only using the manipulatives in this bag. That might be something you want to think about. Um, if you do need gallon baggies to organize or put stuff in, please let us know. We have that and we can always work that. And if all of the classrooms had drugs, remember that we ordered over the years and we had to remove all of them. So if for some reason you get to your room and you can't find your rugs, just let us know and we'll, we'll see if we can figure out where they got stored. <laughs> um, and that goes the same as furniture. If you had, if you can't be table and now you can't find it, or you had, you know, something that you used and now it's not there, please let us know. Um, you know, that's why we say label, but we know sometimes things fall off over the summer or things get displaced, so please let us know. Um, and we'll try to find that for you. Any other questions about this? I think really the takeaway here is setting up your classroom, doing it in a way that um, you can keep the kids safe as best as you possibly can, knowing that we're all going to be there. Um, the quarantine, and she will speak at the end of this, but just a couple of things that I want to put out there. We are, even though we're in person, we do still want teachers to have their Google Classroom pages created and their CSF pages created. Some of it you might be using while the kids are here, and that's great. But if a kid does need to quarantine, a student has to go home, they still need access to learning. 
What we're not asking you to do is to vote asynchronous and synchronous. We're not doing that. But we want them to have access. So whatever you're doing, you just upload to the Google Classroom with some directions so the kids at home know what to do and they can do that. And hopefully at some point in the week, I would say within the first three days, you're checking in with them. How's it going? Do you have any questions? There's not an expectation that you can call them a day. If you do, great. But there's not that expectation. I would say in the first three days you make a call, the next three days you make a call, because more than likely the kids will be home to the 14 days and the children will just know about that. We do want to make sure you're connected with them in some way, but it doesn't have to be every day, and you don't have to have a video camera up so that they can see with all of them. It's basically like you're, they have the flu and they went home, right? We would send work home with them, maybe check in on them a couple times, but other than that, that's not really looking to do any sort of video. If you want to do something like that, you can try it. That's totally your choice. That's not an expectation. Um, if you, the teacher, needs to quarantine, there's a couple different ways that they're doing it this year. So if you need to quarantine, but you have no symptoms, and you want to continue teaching, you feel fine, you would take what's called a COVID leave. If you do that, that does not come out of your sick time. Okay, I'll be very clear on that. That does not come out of your sick time. However, if you are doing a COVID leave, there is an expectation that you're continuing to work. And so what that might look like is checking in with the sub every day. You would still put your absence in the ASAP. The COVID leave would wipe out those sick days, so that's not an issue. You just need that adult, right? So every day you'd be checking in with that adult. Every day you'd be uploading lesson plans. Um, if there's any meetings or anything like that that you would need to attend, the expectation is you would be there virtually. So you would still be working, which is why the COVID leave, it's very important to fill that out because we don't want it to come on your sick days. If, however, you have COVID and you are sick, in any other situation, if you were sick, you would not be expected to work. It's the same thing. You put it in ASAP. You would not put in for the COVID leave because you're sick and you're not working. So those would be pulled out of your sick days. The only time you're doing the COVID leave is if you feel fine enough to work, but you just can't come. Okay, so illness symptoms, like, and you can be, oh, I'm achy, I'm coughing, but I can still work, fine. But if you're really, like, knocks you out and you just don't have the energy and you really just need to take care of yourself, totally understandable, so then that's an ASAP illness.
the Dragon stuff for about two weeks and a couple of free inches on the top top. So a lot of you that are um, was your, that you were here last year, uh, this is basically the same training with some changes. So it will be kind of re a repeat, but um, I also want you to um, it's a lot of information. <laughs> So I want you to, we're gonna, I'm going to send the, um, the PowerPoint and then you can look at it, take your time to look at it some, to, when you have time. There's some links in there that you can, uh, I'm going to skip, but you can definitely, when you have time, just go ahead and take a look. But it is a lot of information, but a lot of it is stuff that we have been doing, so it's not going to be new. I think what Jenny said, some of the stuff that will be new will be like a quarantining close contact, which you don't really need to know about. It's something that we will uh, work with um, the Department of Health, HRS, and Jenny, and um, the staff. So, all right, so we'll see what we do. Um, like I said, my name is Sheila. This is kind of a little bit different for me because last time I did this, it was like on a computer screen, all different faces, so it's really nice to see everyone. Um, a lot of the stuff that I do, I really work with special ed. Um, I'm in charge of the health office, so I train the staff there. We have Gina and Bethany. Bethany is not here today, but she'll be here starting next week. That's when her duty day starts. Um, we do uh, a lot. I do a lot of the field trip, the field trip um, planning. I don't know if we're, we're not doing that this year. We're still doing field trips. Oh, no. Um, and uh, that's how it looks. It seems like there's more to it, but right now that's what it looks like. And Bethany, well, she really is in the health office every day. Uh, so she's seeing all the episodic cares that kids come in, you know, they fell. And if there's anything that, you know, that I need to do that assessment for, she'll call me. Our health office, so I was in there, the three of us could fit in there, but it's very small now. So I um, I got moved to 162, which is in the Anishinaabe side. So if you need to find me, that's where I'm at. But usually I'm in the health office, um, squeezing in with all the stuff. We do have um, six kids with diabetes this year, so I will be in there a lot more often. I mean, I'll be in there just to support. So, um, but just so you know that as a staff, it's it's good to know because they're. Mostly middle school, so I'll talk to middle school at the end of the sometime. Okay, next slide. So, um, everybody has feelings about this, and I feel like just starting, I was here last week, I went through all the emotions of that emoji. Like, I was excited to be here, but then I was like, oh my gosh, super anxious, and even anxious today, of like, what's gonna happen? But, like Jenny said last year, we did a really good job. I mean, we had, um, we did send home like one whole class and they quarantined, but teachers were really mindful about, oh, my student's sick, and, you know, they give us a call, we'll talk about it, we see them. And the thing for me is that there's really, it's hard to be, you know, have a gray line with this because you just don't know. So I really stick with black and white as best as we can. And I think that's what got us through, you know, because if you become like, and I'm not a doctor, so I can't diagnose anybody with an allergy or a cold or COVID. So we really try to stick with um, just really black and white. Like this is this is what you have. This is what we're going to do. This is, you know, that's how we're going to handle it. So if anybody, if you think about what, how do we determine who gets to go home? We really follow the interests of the and I'll go through that. Um, in the slide. So COVID-19, at this point, I'll just go through this. We did um, it's a viral respiratory illness caused by a new, um, well, not new anymore, but new coronavirus. Um, it's spread through by the nose and mouth, droplets, airborne particles. Um, when uh, someone who's infected coughs, sneezes, or exhales, it's contagious up to 40 hours before onset of symptoms, and that. That we look to when we do the contact tracing. So like we look at when symptoms started two days before, we need to know also like where has this child 
child get? You know, where are they going around in school? So that's the part where it's really important for staff to look at attendance. Um, some infected people have no symptoms. And then the incubation period is two to 14 days, most commonly five to seven. That's why we have a 10 to 14 quarantine um, dates for people that have been infected. So here are the symptoms that we really look for. The more common is a fever of 100.4 or higher. If you're at school, if it's 100, we send you home, period. So that hasn't changed. If you have a fever, you're, you're still going to go home. Um, new or worsening cough, difficulty breathing, loss of taste or smell. And then the last common is the sore throat, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, chills, muscle pain, excessive fatigue, severe headache, or worsening nasal congestion or runny nose. That last one is really hard because it could be anything. You know, it could be I didn't sleep last night. You know this. I, you know, it could be allergies. So we we really try to see everything, but also I, again with the black and white, I I don't know. You know, I can't say that is a cold, uh, that's just allergies. So we really stick with a decision tree and that's really helped us in the past. Next slide. So the new thing coming back to school, the Delta variant. Most of you all know um, Delta variant is more contagious and um, may cause more severe illness in unvaccinated persons. So, that's why our little, you know, our, most of our students are not vaccinated. And in middle school, I'm not sure either what most of the kids' vaccination status are. Um, so we really assume that everybody is not vaccinated, and that's why we're trying to protect them. The same mitigation measures work with COVID um, will work for Delta. So the same stuff that we did last year, we're going to do this year. And it's just gonna, that's what, you know, we're sticking to that and it's, it's gonna help. And then fully vaccinated people with Delta variant also uh, with bridge infections can spread virus to others, although it appears to be infectious for a shorter period of time. Really our vaccination, as you all know, is it, it keeps us away from the hospital and the ICUs. You know, you might still get sick. It's like influenza, you can get the flu vaccine and still be sick and still have the flu, um, so it's the same thing. It just is not gonna kill you. It's not gonna take the ICU, intubate it, all that stuff. Um, the big thing is that face coverings are critical and they do still remain an effective mitigation measure for Delta. So we're keeping the mask on. I'm really happy that Minneapolis um, decided to put the mask mandate in schools. Honestly, I know it's not fun, and I'd love to see everyone's faces. I'd love to see the kids' faces, especially the kindergartners who, like this, like the first graders too, I don't really know what they look like. You know, <laughs> I have no idea. And so as well, before you could see, oh, that's so-and-so, but, you know, it's just, just keep trying to keep us all safe. Next slide. Uh, this is just a slide. Uh, you can click on it during your time and uh, take a look. So next slide, mitigation. So we talked about we talked about this last year and it just it's still the same. You know, we have our personal responsibilities and our shared responsibilities. And there's no like one thing that will keep us safe from um, um, from COVID. So all these different things that we have, like masks, vaccines, hand washing, social distancing, all those things together will help us. Um, kind of get through this year. So the first one is the home health screening. We did that last year. We asked parents to screen their child from uh, from home, um, and you know we asked them to take our temperature. I'm not sure if that will happen because we still get kids coming from school that are sick. But you know, but we try. So make sure just to remind families to. You know, when you're having your main open house, to remind them to do the home screening. We posted stuff on Facebook last year, my new parents. There's videos on how to do the home screening. Um, and it's just checking them as they go out the door. Do you have a cough? You know, or um, 
You have a hard time breathing. I mean, that sore throat, like a sore throat. You know, they come into the health office and you know that can be anything. So we just really try to um, have the parents not send their kids to school. But we know that, you know, they will and that's okay and we can deal with it at school. Um, so stay home, same things. If you test positive for COVID-19, if you show symptoms of COVID-19, the, the illness, symptomatic, and are waiting to get tested or waiting for a COVID test 19 result. That's a big one. I think families forget that if I'm testing for it, or like my husband is, everybody still needs to stay home until they get results. So for us in the health office, we try to catch that so that when you know we know somebody's positive at home, we try we make sure that all the kids are home, all the kids are staying home until we get results from the families. Um, so a close a close contact, like a household member has COVID or suspected COVID, don't plan to confirm. So that's the other thing too. We uh, with the close contacts, uh, we talk about how long they have to quarantine. And then if they're told to see home by a medical professional or public health. And the next one is the, go ahead, Jamie. Um, well, was there a decision tree? You don't need to look at the decision. That will come up, but we can talk, uh, I'll talk a little bit about it. So the next one is the face covering for all. Um, so with the um, Minneapolis face coverage, we have for all staff, students, and visitors over two years of age regardless of individual's vaccination status in the building. So we, last year, but like the high fibers, it was kind of optional for them. Um, this year, they do need to wear a face mask. Just so, I mean, and just, you just have to keep reminding them to keep them on. Um, so that's a, a little change from last year. Um, um, face covers are required in the school buses or public transportation. So with the school buses, last year we did quarantine like two buses, um, only because there was like no seating charge. So if they're on the bus, there's a high chance that they might get quarantined if there was a positive on the bus, um, to say no. And then, it does say here that generals do not need to wear outdoors for a face mask, but like I said, we'll just have to look into it. Okay, sounds good. Um, and for students that are not able to wear them last year, we didn't have anybody with a medical exemption, but if you do have one, um, please let us know uh, in the health office so we can follow up with the families. So here is our sign for layers of protection. 
protection, right? If a student um, who has a medical exemption for wearing masks, what else can we do for them? We can try to continue to social distance with them. Will they continue to wear our masks properly? Wash our hands. Um, those are the things that we can do if they have, if they're not um, able to wear a mask. So we might see more of that this year. And also, I know last year we were talking about the kids not wearing them in the school. How do you know if they have a medical exemption? Um, you can always contact us and ask, because we would know if that student has one. So. Uh, hand washing. This is a big one, and I think our, you know, it's just the basic skill of hand washing and how much it can protect us. Um, you know, I'm not going to read through the basics of it, but it's really important. I know we still have the doing follow up good hand hygiene using the hand sanitizers. Um, so please continue to um, get your students to wash their hands. And really, the actual hand washing part is, you know, the important part. If you can do the pumps, great, but those, you know, they can only do so much and they dry out students' hands. So if you can try to have them, you know, wash before lunch, after recess, um, things like that, that would be really helpful. Uh, mitigation strategy four, which is the social distancing. It's recommended three to six, but that's a lot different now than last year. Last year, you had, you know, people were measuring the tables, and so now we have more kids in the classroom. So we'll like try to, if you can, do that three in the classroom, uh, three feet apart. But if you can, that's why we have the mask paint and the hand washing. Um, for social staff and visitors. Um, so adults congregating common areas, um, just limit the numbers. This was include um, virtual meetings options and outdoor when possible. Like I said, this is still, for, that was from last year, that's changed a little bit. We're able to have more indoor meetings um, with a virtual component to it. There is the sharing of food and holding potluck is really discouraged on the first day of school. Um, and then indoors and outdoor events are allowed, just following the health and safety protocols uh, should be held at all times. Um, so I'm not sure, is our um, open house will that be indoors? Okay, sounds good. And then this is just the cleaning strategy and the ventilation. We still have all our um, uh, portable ventilation units in the classroom and in the health office. We still have the BioS. Um, and I can still say try to keep, keep the things that need to be really clean. They're like door handles that are touched more frequently. So those are the things that you want to make sure at least are cleaning um, during the day. Uh, and so anything that is shared by other students. Next one. Um, this is just more layers of protection of PPE. Last year, um, I did train some people for PPE, but mostly it was for um, work, uh, being our backup staff in the health office, and I think that will still be the case. Um, if you need other protection, like gloves, gown, if that's something that you want to wear when you're working with your students, please let me know and I will train you in those. Um,
saliva testing. We don't have any more information on that this year. And even testing for students. So that's just still information that we're waiting for um, uh, FPS about. But as soon as I get more information on that, I'll let you know. And also the vaccine. Uh, so the vac vaccination is, of course, voluntary, but it's recommended. Um, I am going to try to see if we can do a vaccination clinic for um, anybody, especially the middle school students. For the middle school students, um, they do still need, of course, a parental consent. So we'll have to work on that, but um, I'd like to do that in the fall going to this year, just so you know, and then I'll, I'll let the list know what you want. Sometimes you had to wait a couple hours to send a kid home. So, but we'll do 
four of us to let you know we're going home um, and keep you posted. This is the decision tree, um, and you don't need to know all of this, but uh, it's just a good kind of, t you can take a look at it for yourself. Um, and it gets updated all the time, so this might change in the next couple weeks. And any of my information that I give you could change at any time. Um, so I'll just make sure that I uh, send an email, let Jenny and Jamie know if there's any other changes. So for staff, really for staff, if you are ill, you report to Jenny, the principal. So anytime you're sick, you let them know and they work with you on how to um, you know, advise you on what you need to do. So stay home if you're sick, if you're at work, leave immediately or isolate from others. Um, check if you're school, we don't really have a spot. I mean, we have our illness room, but for staff, I think staff usually just go home. Um, testing is recommended um, through the employee health care provider. We don't, right now, we don't have an on-site, like just come in and test. Um, but we have testing kits, but I'm not sure what we're going to do with those. We're still waiting. And there's also more, of course, the DHS testing, testing site is all over the, the city. And then we notify Jenny of if you're home. This is just a little bit more information on um, who you can call. Next slide. Okay, so if contact tracing and quarantine when there is a positive case. So for contact tracing, for preparing for it, staff and visitors must check in and check out daily. And that's why we need the, for you to check in and check out in the, um, uh, I forgot what it's called, the app, yes. <laughs> um, main, the maintaining the uh, student CD chart, I think is so really relevant. And the lunch room, I don't know, is that, are we still doing that? Okay, sounds good. Um, and then keep accurate daily attendance. I'm going to give an example for this, where we did have the quarantine kids, and I was really happy that, that it was Ramadan, because a lot of our kids were gone. Because <laughs> we were contact tracing in a bus. And so, um, but sometimes you, you know, on the attendance, you can't, I can't if you know they, they were there at that time so as long as you're able to maintain good attendance it's really helpful for us because we will go back two days so you kind of have to know who was in your class two days on a certain day so that's the part where it's really important just make sure you have your attendance um, uh, because we'll go back to you and be like, well, was so-and-so here on the 12th? And, you know, the 11th and the 10th. Who were they sitting by? What were they doing? Uh, so it becomes really complicated, so we want to prepare you ahead of time. But that could happen when we have those questions for you. Um, of course, uh, notify all administrators of the staff cases, and then all the students' uh, cases we will be notified. And usually MDH will notify us or the family will let us know. So for anyone, for any positive case that has been in the building, uh, the building administrator will work with them and the health office will work with the staff. Okay, so this is new this fall for exemption for quarantine for students. Um, the big one for this one is that if students are close contacts, so if they were wearing, correctly wearing well-fitted masks and other school prevention strategies in place, students may not need to quarantine. Um, so we, that's why we're encouraging students to wear masks in the classroom. This is very new to us. Um, I'm still getting a lot more information from it, but. If anything changes, I will let you know. So that's a big one. Whereas if there were a close contact, usually uh, they, you know, we quarantine members close to them. But now if everybody's wearing a mask properly, they can stay and not have to quarantine. 
I'll say that. <laughs> then, if you have questions, like I said, I will continue to get more information on this and then we'll let you know. Yes? Well, that would be the teachers, right? So who's ever in that classroom? Because that's not like I'd be like, hey, you know, how was your class with... I mean, I, you know... So I think it's really trying to make sure that the kids are in their mask properly. And that's going to be the hard part. Especially the little ones. different. So 
you know, we see this now, but it could be, it, 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 we have to kind of look at what is happening with that specific case. And I will work with a teacher on how we're going to deal with that. And we try our best, you know, that's all we can do is try our best to remind our kids to um, get their mask on. And if we have to quarantine a whole classroom, we will. I think this is an effort to keep kids in class. You know, we miss, they miss so much, but also, but we also want to be safe, right? So you know what's happening in your classroom. And if, if this happens, we can talk about it. And um, you know, you only can do you only can do what we can at this point. So just do your best. We're trying to do our best in the health office. And if this happens, we can work on it together. Okay. Uh, I, we can keep going on. I don't think I have much more. We did talk about this. Yeah. Sure. Yep. So close contact um, who need to quarantine notified of the exposure. Close contact others that receive any identifying information. And we try really hard to do this, and that's why. Um, but you need to know also who is going to be out of your classroom. So that's why we send those emails that you know, give you at least um, an initial um, and an ID number. And those are really the information that we give. We don't give any much more information than that. We try not to. Um, just to give everybody, um, you know, their rights for confidentiality. That goes with vaccination. You don't need to tell anybody your vaccination. That is not, that is your personal information. Um, so, and nobody, in, we, we don't need to ask you what those things are. But same thing with the students. Um, we want to make sure that their privacy, um, and private information is safe. Um, and then this is more just like well-being, we can keep moving forward, more information. So really we want to, you to remember to stay at home if you're sick, that's still, still the case, number one. Keep, try to keep your distance, um, mask up and use other layers of protection, and then just really try to keep health information private. Um, and this one's for special ed staff, but we, um, and it's a lot more of the PPE. So if you have questions about PPE, let me know. But a lot of that stuff is really for kids that are like spitting, you know, like you gotta wear a mask and a face shield for that, or if you wanna wear a gown with it too. Um, so that's the information that, but you don't know that we have a lot of new students. So once you know, then you can come talk to me and I can give you more information about um, what sort of things you need to wear. So I know that was a lot, and I think it will constantly be changing, but if we just keep our mask on, try to social distance and wash our hands, um, those are the things that we can control. You know, those are the things that we can control in our classroom and for ourselves. Um, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to come down to the health office, talk to us. Bethany starts uh, a week from tomorrow, and so does Gina. Um, and we'll be ready for the new school year. So, does anybody have questions? Can I just add something? <laughs> if you are concerned about Minneapolis Public Schools COVID protocol, please attend the bargaining session via <clears throat> virtual this Thursday, five or six o'clock. It's I can't remember which the start time is. I'll let you know. It's all about COVID protocol in the schools. That is, we are bargaining for a new contract right now, and we are talking about COVID in schools and about what is appropriate and not. Because when I just saw that, that made me freak out a little bit, to be honest. And I don't freak out very easily. So the idea that people don't need to be quarantined, I, I, I don't know how we're going to actually accurately monitor whether somebody's had their mask off for 10 minutes with a person or not. So if you're concerned about those kind of things, all you got to do is turn it on while you're at home, MMFT59 um, Facebook page. It'll be live. Um, and I can put it in your mailboxes too so that you know. Thanks for that reminder, Amy. Um, I, I will say the one thing that um, Rochelle Cox did say was that when we were kind of pushing back on the quarantine, it was like, obviously, we'll, we'll do this, we'll see how it goes, and if we have to adjust, we'll adjust. Um, I, I can say that when I informed her that I was COVID positive, like, I literally got a call from the Minnesota Department of Health. So they are in very close contact with the Department of Health. They actually have a liaison that works with our district. So they're not, they 
are taking the lead from MPH. So to me, that was like, okay, so it's still, we still got that connection, which I think is really important. Um, and so he kind of walked me through my situation. So it isn't just a couple people who are kind of know making these decisions. So that is one thing that I took comfort in, um, but it is, like Amy said, it's nerve wracking and there's things that we might just really have a hard time wrapping our mind around with these um, guidelines.
classes, so we're just splitting up the two schools. So that's how it's gonna go. We'll let you know about the breakfast, but that is something that we are asking that they switch. We don't know about numbers. We'll find out. Um, we'll find out from Brandon about that. Drinking fountains, nothing came out that said the drinking fountains have to be covered, but as Jamie said, those kindergartners love to get their mouth full on that thing. So we are gonna do water bottles again. Um, if you want to cover your drinking fountain, go ahead and do it. Otherwise, you're gonna have to monitor that. Um, so you will have access to water bottles every single student will get when we order them again. Um, and we'll just do that. You can decide on the drinking fountain in your classroom. There hasn't been any information given to us about that like there was last year. So the engineers are not going to come around and cover it. So you'll have to do that if you want to use it. Um, online school. I just wanted to put this in there because we've heard a couple people say, well, if they're sick, they'll just go to the online school. That's not how it is. The online school is a school. So if you're choosing to go to the online school as a parent, send your kids there, you are then unannoying you will no longer be here. And we will not say the spot for you. So I want to be very clear, if you're having conversations with parents, and parents haven't mentioned that, please make sure they understand if they're putting their student in the online school, which is completely their choice, they are unenrolling that Sullivan, and they will not be guaranteed a spot for that. There was a lot of confusion about that. It came up a number of times. They are a school. They just are a brick and mortar school. So there's a principal, there's teachers, all of that. If a student goes there, they have to commit to being there for that whole quarter. So they can't like keep going in and out, in and out, in and out. So we just want to be very clear, and I think we're even asking for a commitment. So if you're going to come here to the online school, I think they're even asking for like a full year commitment instead of a quarter by quarter commitment. So, but I just want to make sure that that's clear as, as if we do have to start quarantining and this comes up, please know that parents have to understand that I'm in only here to do that. But then. So what does it mean on our attendance when it says next to a student that their distance would be? Like this so, not from last year. Gonna, your attendance is going to look different and we're going to send out information about that, but you're not going to eat tag kids. What it looks like? Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you. 
through but not upstairs, but just they were pulled up for cleaning. So we've got a whole bunch of them in my office and we'll put them back down. But that 
is the way that if you're wondering if somebody is here, that's where you want to look. That board that's in the office, it's, it's been, that was so hit and miss. So this way everybody can access it at any time and see who's in the building. Or if, if it's something sudden and you're not feeling well and you can't come in, please email your team and also include me on that so I can get, get you on the board or on the calendar um, and make sure we have coverage and that type of thing. So, uh, and then teachers, you'll be putting your absence into ASA and that's how it's deducted from sick time or vacation or whatever it may be. For hourly staff, you will put your time in when you do your payroll. As far as students go, so um, Hassan, as I said, does attendance. And the, what they've put out this year so far is that teachers are only going to be marking students with PS for physically seated or, <laughs> or you. So that, those are the only two codes that you're going to use. Well, 
Do they stay there? Um, so they're going to put the younger kids in the front and the older kids in the back, which means that <laughs> siblings will most likely not be sitting together. Uh, and this is also you know, the contact tracing and all of that. So that's going to be different. That will be on their bus tank as, as their seat assignment will be on there. There are only going to be a couple spaces. Yes. And do you know, are they, do they scan at point of delivery if they just get on the bus at their house as well? In the morning? Yeah, also. They, right, they should. They'll also have a list, so my guess is they'll be able to check them off if they didn't have a bus stand in the bus. So, bus passes. This, um, they're telling us that we can have no more than three bus passes per bus, which is, is <coughs> I know it's new. <laughs> they have that too. Okay, well, they're, they're not allowing more than three bus passes. So that means you think kids really can't just go to a friend's house for the day. So we have to save those for emergencies. So if you have a parent that calls you and says, you know, I need to, I need to have my child go to a different address today, please refer them to Ruby. She needs to make all those determinations and then get bus, bus tags done. And she's getting all bus tags, any kind of changes like that will be done by, by 11. It used to be noon, now it's going to be 11 to make sure that she gets has time to get everything done. And so what about kids that are like in dual homes? I'm assuming they'll have bus passes legitimately on both buses, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's correct. All right. Um, okay, that's it for transportation for right now. Well, let me just put one other point. Um, information is coming out to families. It's supposed to be coming out this week. And they're sending it out via email, so, and phone calls. I think they're, they're doing a robo call too. So that is how families are being notified. They're not getting postcards this year. But that's coming up. Amy, did you have yeah. a question? I just wanted to ask, because we have new case managers, if you have special education students, and questions about transportation, you can see your grade band social worker about that. Same with our homeless and highly mobile families that are half the students going into CAPS. Um, with Lilian Bob, we're just going to individually take that for now. Right. Okay, thank you. Your badges will work. Um, for those that don't have badges yet, you can key in your information, which is kind of slow, but it does work. Um, and if you have a large printing job, please see me. I can help you send, get stuff sent over to the document center. They can do all kinds of things, you know, large format or books, or they have all kinds of different printing formats that they can do. But that would all come through me because I need to provide codes. Generally speaking, if it's a just a regular printing job, they usually their turnaround has been like one to two days. However, at the beginning of the year, it's going to be longer. I would expect it to take maybe a week. They told me like three or four days for a job that I just asked about. So uh, we do have you know the printer upstairs in the staff lounge is a very high capacity printer. So if you have jobs, you can go ahead and send it through that because we don't, the paper cut thing is not really a thing right now. So um, I guess we used to say if it's over so many pages, please send it through the document center. And that's still true if it's colored or if it's a super large job. You know, we don't want to tie up the printer for the whole day. Uh, but, but the smaller things, you need copies for your classroom. Sets of things I can go ahead and, and use the printer. The color copier is in the office, and the one upstairs is just black. The language line. So, as I said before, please use contacts Kassan, Aiden, or Ruby. Those are your first people for, for speaking with families when you need an interpreter. Uh, if they're not available or a language we don't have.
out here in the building, then you can use the language line. The language line is expensive, so we really ask you to try to limit your use of that and watch your time on those phone calls. I don't have the language line holds in the on the staff roster anymore because I just don't because the roster goes out to more than just us. So I'm going to email you that. So keep that in your email if you need it. So I'll have that sent out. Um, also about the languages on the roster, you'll see I put languages for people that um, in parentheses next to their names, so you can see on the roster who might in the building speak if there's an emergency if you need an interpreter. You might be able to have somebody else help. And if you see on the roster that your name doesn't have a language by it and you speak it and are willing to help, please let me know that. Mailboxes are done, they're all ready to go, uh, hopefully. <laughs> they always change, so. Um, but it's really important that you check those in the morning before school. Ruby will put bus tags in at the end of the day, so they, they need to be picked up. And especially now, you know, every time that, that changes, those kids have to have them, so they're not going to be able to get on the bus, is what we're being told. Cindy's talking about, for those of you who are in the staff mailboxes, in the main office area. Yes. And if, if you can't find a mailbox, there's some pink, a pink sheet hanging on the side that has all the, the staff names and that we add people as needed to the bottom of the mailbox number so you can find them. For new staff, um, I do have some folders and I'll kind of show you a few things in the office and I'm hoping to be able to do that tomorrow around 10 a.m. unless there's something else coming up. For hourly staff, you can certainly join also, but I'm also going to do another time for that next week. Yes? You put up this tool. Could there be a printout of the uh, IQ, the IQ uh, barcode? So, uh, last year I would go up to my room and then take the picture, and uh, there would be a line at the door of people taking the picture. For, oh, checking it, yes. Um, yeah, they're on all the doors, um, the QR. Also, I do have some instructions, and I'll print them out again, for how to download the app onto your phone. Yeah, for staff check and then check out. Yeah. With our phone extensions not being correct, I sent out the roster. Please, please, please check your phones in your classrooms. As phones, the, the numbers seem to go with phones, so if phones got moved around, they might it might be wrong. And there's been lots of times when we've had to contact the room and the phone number listed isn't correct. So please take a moment to do that if you can't find your phone number or you don't know how to do that, just call me and then I can see what number you're calling from. The staff emergency form is very important. I sent that out, but I'll, I'll send out another one, another reminder of that. We need that in case there's an issue we need to reach someone uh, or if um, like car, your car lights are on or there's an issue. So please make sure you get that done every year. For supplies, okay. for supplies, we're doing it differently this year. I'm going to have, if you need supplies for your classroom, come and get the supplies that you need. Um, trying, one person trying to get all the supplies out, that's been a very difficult thing. And so we're going to just try, try it differently and hope it goes well. If you notice that the supplies in any area are running low, please let me know. I try and keep an eye on that, but I, I don't want to miss something and then run out. And I'm asking that you please do not take any more than you need for the beginning of the year. Don't take what you need for the entire year. We 
keep the supply room stocked so you don't need to stock up in your home. The cleaning supplies are going to be given to you, so the stuff in the conference room, please don't take any of that. We'll be distributing that to make sure we get what needs to go, where it needs to go. The website, I don't know, hopefully everybody's had a chance to look at the new website. It really looks nice. Um, but we, we are really lacking in the, the staff pages. And it is different this year. So what you're going to be doing is creating a Google site. And Ruby has sent out instructions on how to do that. So you're going to, and it, it's a template, so it's very easy to do. You just create that, you add her as an editor, and then she'll be able to get that up. So please make sure you do that. We um, are hearing from a lot of families who are looking at our website now. I think it's a change. We're having a lot more people look at, look at that. So please get that done uh, as soon as you have time. Well at Work, for those of you who are new or don't know about this, there is a Well at Work clinic at the Davis Center, which is free to all staff. And they do, um, a lot of, well, they do a lot of different things. You, you just call them up and make an appointment so they can see you for illnesses or um, and anything. They can do medications. And, so there, it's a really good resource for staff. I have information in the office on it. If you need that, you can also just find it on the, the website, the MPS website. I think that's about it. Oh, the engineers right now are a little short. It's just Paul during the day. So um, if you're needing something from an engineer, please be patient. He's got a, I think we're a little short staffed in that department. And I think I covered everything. I wanted to cover, did anybody have any questions?
then who will be in charge of checking a device out to that new student. So whether they're coming from another Minneapolis school or whether they're coming from out of the city, whatever, then it will be you. But for the first few days of school, we will be doing that for you. But um, I just want to stress that, that you're doing it. Please make sure then that you're reading that technology plan that's all linked in here so that you will know then how to do that in the future. Um, but we will figure that out. That's one of the things we'll be working on in the next couple days. So we will be emailing you out the plan for that. Um, and again, this is going to be one of those things we've never done this before. <laughs> so we're going to do it and see how it goes. Um, and we may have to adjust as we're going. So um, we will try to communicate as best as we can. Um, but just know that we'll take care of that at least for the first few days. We've also created a checklist for each classroom teacher that has your student roster with their IDs and then columns that you can indicate that a device was checked in, checked out, if one was damaged, if something needed to be replaced. So that's all in a document that we'll be sharing with you as well. And then a couple things from Ha, um, that last bullet point. Um, everybody should have an iPad or a Chromebook charging cart in their room. If yours is not in there, like you can come and check with me and you can look in the, probably it's in the Middle School Media Center, but if it's not, then you do an e-ticket. And she also asked that if you need assistance with your technology to please create an e-ticket and specify the date and time that you would be available. Do specialists get a card? Have you had one in the past? No. <laughs> <laughs> Have I wanted one for 29 years? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, they'll, they'll all, they should have one in your room, Amy. 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 So, yes. so each kid has their own device. Oh, yeah, that's right. Bringing it to that's right. Okay, good. You'll just need to communicate if you want kids to have their device when they come to you. Why do we need a charging card if we assign each kid a down charge? So, like, if you need to charge, I don't know. But you can't get it. So, here's what we're not clear about. There's a little bit of a difference between elementary and secondary. Let me just say that. So, you guys may be sending your devices home. Elementary might not be sending their devices home every night. So there's a difference in that. The other thing is, but this is where elementary teachers are going to really have to be really awesome meteorologists because that e-learning plan is crucial. If we have a snow day, they're expecting us to be teaching and working with kids because everyone has a device. So if we even think it's going to snow, we got to send them home. Everything has to go home. And for those of us, I know, um, Sandy brought it up, some of us just need to not take our devices home so that we have our own time to be not here. You're going to have to take it home on those days. So that's where it's a little bit different, Matt, and so that's why I would, yeah. You might not need those words. All of your students will all come back with the charging iPad.
have to be with us during this time. This is just if people have specific questions that you can ask us. And then if you would like to speak virtually, if you could just call our text one of us, just let us know so we make sure that we're on the same platform. That everyone should have gotten an invitation to this video. Yeah, we do have a new summit page, so please make sure you have access to that. If you don't, let us know. We can
Right, the attendance sign-in sheet for this is on the table right outside here. Please look for your name, and if I didn't get your name on there, just write it up. Thank you.